Emirates team New Zealand's new AC-40 got a few monkeys off its back on just the second day of sailing, managing to crack the 40 knots barrier, do a full nosedive, then a capsize, and a full sail away recovery. The AC-40 test boat, which will also be used in America's Cup 2024 regattas for the Youth and Women's America's Cup gave the four crew a solid workout on just the second day of sailing, doing 40 knots of boat speed in under 15 knots true wind speed, sailing at more than three times the wind speed. The biggest takeaway is that the AC-40 is quite tender, or tippy, and can capsize at slow speed or stopped, but is quite easily righted. Emirates team New Zealand coach, Ray Davies, who is one of the four-man crew explained the eventful day. The capsize happened at slow speed after leaving the team chase boat. Not enough forward movement was put onto the AC-40 before it was let go from the towing boat. The AC-40 got caught in irons, which is head to wind. Then it started drifting backwards, the head blew off and the boat gently lay down on her side. Crew member Nathan Outridge, who was to leeward, scampered out of his cockpit and went to the bow along the foot of the jib. He attached a line from the chase boat and with a gentle tug on her bow, pulling to windward, she righted easily. In his interview, Ray Davies explains that the crew checked below decks, and a bucket was passed down, but came back up empty. Crewing today were Nathan Outridge and Sam Meach on the helm, Ray Davies trimming, and Nick Burridge on semi-automated flight control, it was the second day of sailing for the rookie crew, all of whom had their first experience of foiling monohull sailing, the day before. The recon team reported that the AC-40 seems to start to lift at just over 10 knots boat speed, at an estimated true wind angle of 70 degrees. Estimated speed to be fully foiling is 13.5 knots of boat speed. The AC-40 did 14 tacks and 16 jibes in the 5.5-hour session. This is the weekly Sailing World on Water for September 30, 2022. It features global highlights of the sport, which have been released in the last seven days. In the closest ever finish to a Sail GP event, Quentin Delapier led the France Sail GP team to a stunning victory by just three seconds over Jimmy Spithill's U.S. team to claim the team's first event win in Sail GP. The event win in Andalusia Cadiz sees the French team rocket into the all-important top three of the championship standings after six events of season three. The resurgence of Spithill's team continued as it made a second straight final and couldn't have been closer to a second straight event win. Tom Slingsby's team struggled in the final to finish a distant third, but it was an improved weekend from the Australians who had missed the last two event finals. The team has also stretched its lead over New Zealand in the season standings to four points. On an eye-catching but heartbreaking day for the Canadian team, Phil Robertson won both of the day's races, but it wasn't enough to overcome a poor day one effort and the newcomers missed the final by one point. But it was Delapier who thrilled the crowds with a masterful final performance, as light winds saw just four athletes on board the F-50 with the driver joined by Kevin Pepinet, Mathieu Van Dame, and Menon Audinet. Delapier said, This feels really, really good. It's a very special day for the French team. We have come back from so far in the field to the top. I mean last season, we were last in cadres, and I think the team pushed really hard since the beginning of this season to keep the learning curve increasing, so we are really happy. Strategist and grinder for the final race Audinet said, it's just so awesome, what a crazy feeling to win this event all together. I'm just so happy. I think Quentin likes a challenge and the last race was definitely a challenge and he was able to pull it all together and get us ready and he was just pushing us to be at our best. Back-to-back -back strong performances from Spithill sees his team back in contention for a second straight season grand final appearance. Spithill said, the team was under real pressure going into the last two events, but we have stuck together and it's given us a lot of belief and a lot of confidence. Our coach Philippe has been spending a lot of long hours with the team collectively and individually, and we've got to keep this going. It's a great result for the team to get a big points spread like that and we're going to try and carry that through to Dubai. 
I'm really impressed with how the team is coming together. Tens of thousands of people packed the shoreline for a second straight day in Cadiz, but the home team Spain, driven by Jordi Zama, failed to recreate its solid day one effort and finished the event in seventh place. For the fourth regatta of the 2022-52 Super Series, the world's leading Grand Prix regatta series, returns to Italy for the first time since 2019, this time going back to the Marina di Scalino in beautiful Tuscany. A long awaited return to Tuscany in beautiful Italy for the 52 Super Series fourth regatta of the season and this is the Royal Cup 52 Super Series Scarlino. Top of the table with very very slim lead for uh, Phoenix but uh, there's big changes on board the platoon as Vasco Vascotto returns as tactician. I'm very lucky because it is a privilege to share with these guys. These guys are so good. It will be easy for me from now on to be integrated in this kind of team. They are very nice uh, and uh, I think that we can do something very good. First day of the Royal Cup in Scarlino, two good races, uh, 20 knots of breeze in the first race, the second race finishing with very light breezes and a big wind shift. But it's Quantum Racing who come out on top after the first day by virtue of two second places. Vayu win the first race and the second race is won by Sled. Vayu get a nice uh, start at the top end of the first beat, they get ahead and they're uh, leading round uh, the uh, top mark first time round and they go on to say record their first win of the 52 Super Series of their careers on the circuit. Second race, uh, Sled get through Quantum at the top mark and lead through with a big shift on the final downwind and uh, it's a big win for Sled but Quantum is say two second places lead the regatta. Anytime you can come off the water and score that well, we'll be happy with that. And it was uh, very interesting, lots of different changing conditions that we had to work through, so the team did a great job. Interesting day, it was uh, all on that second race especially, it was breeze shifting around and uh, rain squall that went through and turned the thing inside out but fortunately you know we were at the front of the fleet when that happened and managed to hang on. I felt really good, it felt good to finally get a win, it feels like we're moving forward especially getting a win in the breeze. Yeah we haven't really been that quick in the breeze before but today it was going well. After two races, Quantum Racing with two second places are on four points, Sled are second with a first and a fifth for six points, and third are Phoenix, third and a fourth for the day for seven points. Two good races here in Scarlino, the opening day of the Royal Cup, Quantum Racing on top by virtue of two second places, race wins for Vayu and for Sled. In the Golden Globe race the USA entrant Guy Debord has called in with the latest on his boat Spirit, which ran aground in the Canaries. He has interest from local salvage companies to salvage the boat. He is talking here to race organizer Don McIntyre. You know, after going through the checkpoint at Lazarate, you know, I was awake for over 30 hours, you know, getting the boat to the checkpoint, and um, I chose to go. Uh, down the uh, the east side of Fuente Ventura, and I, the 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 angle of the wind and all it was close hauled, but I was I was sailing a course about 30 degrees above above the island, so I was all safe. And I knew I was tired, so I I, I stood up and was smoked a cigar, which helps keep me awake. And I stood up there for about two hours, and finally I said, okay, I'll sit down for a minute. And the moment I sat down, I obviously, because I was so fatigued, fell asleep. And and the reason the boat hit the rocks is that the breeze uh, um, um, uh, velocity dropped off significantly. And in doing so, the hydrovane, you know, the boat turned turned to port towards the rocks. And I was not uh, I was not aware of that until the boat hit the rocks. And um, uh, and the, the 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 action of the boat and all was very violent. I was almost thrown overboard, at, you know, because I was asleep in the cockpit. And uh, but I went down below uh, and got on the VHF radio for the mayday. 
And each wave was like the, the wave would pick the boat up, you know, several feet and drop it, you know, and I was thrown across the cabin and I'd have to crawl back up and, and it did that, you know, for probably about 30 to 45 minutes till the boat is where it's resting now. And each wave actually got, got almost easier because the boat got more protected in the shallower water. Um, but, you know, it's a sad situation. I, I truly, truly, when rethinking about, you know, if I went on the west side of the island opposed to the east, I wouldn't have had a lee shore. So it was a bad, it was a bad decision by the skipper, who was me. And I'm paying, I'm paying the, uh, the, the penalty for it today. Yeah, that's an excellent classic. Um, hey, listen, can you update us on what's happening with the salvage efforts at the moment? Uh, there are two companies, one in Grand Canaria, Canaria who is, uh, uh, putting together a, a plan supposedly to float it with float bags. And, uh, and there is a, a local company here, uh, that is already on the beach as we speak. Cause so I just saw a video of the boat that they shot. And they're contacting the authorities to see if they have permission to bring the cranes down to the beach. So one of these, uh, these companies hopefully later today can put a proposal to me. Um, I've contacted and have hired a local attorney to review the documents to make sure that, you know, I retain ownership of the boat. You know, it's not like a salvage that I'm going to pay to have them take it off, but they, they own the boat. And, um, and then if, if, if everything proceeds to move forward the way I expect it to in the next few days, uh, the boat will be in a boat yard where I can evaluate it for an, and repair. Yeah, that's great. Okay, good luck with all that, and uh, thanks for the update. It's uh, quite handy to, you know, I know there's a lot of people interested, and uh, we uh, wish yeah. you all the success, Guy, to get it off in one piece, and uh, uh, I know you, you're trying to have the least environmental impact and all the rest of it, and it seems the locals are looking after the boat. Has, the boat has not caused any environmental, environmental impact. The diesel fuel was evacuated from the boat the, the very next day, um, there's no damage to, uh, to a reef. It's, it's lava rocks. There's nothing there except slime on the rocks. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, the, these rocks go wet and dry, wet and dry, depending on the tides. Yeah. So, um, um, uh, there's no damage, which I'm very happy about, obviously. And the locals have been keeping an eye on the boat for you, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. too, that too. So. Yeah. Yep. All right. That's great. Thanks for the update, guy. And we'll uh, we'll keep up with it. And good luck, eh? All right. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thanks, mate. At the Annapolis Yacht Club last Friday, eight clubs with teams of six lined up for match racing, three on three team racing, and two on two team racing. It's fast, furious, and decidedly fun. And on day one, there was breeze on. Dobbs Davis reports. Hi, I'm Dobbs Davis for T2P TV. We're in day one of the 321 Regatta here at Annapolis Yacht Club. This is an amazing event. It's, it's match racing, it's team racing, it's eight teams from around the U.S., elite teams, each with six team members, and it's just, it's going to be an exciting day. We have fall conditions here in the very first day of the fall with 10 to 15 knots of wind, so we're looking forward to a great day. Here we are in match one. J105's match racing coming in from the right side into the pre-start box is an Ida Lewis Yacht Club. Annapolis Yacht Club, they've entered from the left side and going into a classic dial-up where both boats sit head to wind for a bit with no particular advantage and we'll see how they handle this. With just over two minutes to go, Ida Lewis Yacht Club are chasing the Annapolitans. Ah, interesting. They didn't go and jibe around with them. But we've got two minutes to kill, so plenty of action ahead. Less than a minute to go. They're on final approach to the start. Very, very close. Match umpires are not really in position to see that overlap. And that's going to be the game here. Who wants the right? Who wants the left? Very nicely played by the yellow team. 
You can see, folks, they're slowing down. There's still time left. And there's the start. Really close start, folks. And the breeze is oscillating back and forth quite a bit. So even though uh, the boat to Lord has won the, mat won the match start, the match certainly isn't over. There's lots to play for here in this breezy conditions. Well, there's the tack on the ley line. The leading team in yellow led them all the way to the right corner. No overlap of the zone, so no entitlement for the trailing boat to have mark room. There's a no spinnaker flag at the start, so neither team is going to be setting spinnakers here for their first downwind leg. Ida Lewis Yacht Club rounding the gate here, finishing one lap of the course with Annapolis Yacht Club coming around the other gate just to split it up. AYC made some gains on the left side of the second beat and had to duck the Ida Lewis team here close to the top of the second weather leg. AYC back in the lead here at the top of the second leg. But it's close. Let's see if Ida Lewis can tuck inside. We should see a yellow flag go up on the signal boat, signifying Ida Lewis winning the first match, match of the match race series. These are the amazing foiling women who are on Lake Garda hitting out during Foiling Week 2022. Hi, I'm JC. We're here at Lake Garda and we're doing a female foiling experience and we're trying lots of different types of boats. So yesterday we went out on the 69F. We did 31.5 knots, which was pretty exciting. but obviously Luca and Foiling Week have put on this amazing opportunity to get out in the 69Fs. I raced them last year, but really have been looking for an opportunity to get back out in them again, get some more top speeds. So we've had a really good three days of foiling with a pretty good, big group of girls. To be here in Foiling Week, that's my first time and I definitely hope I'm gonna be back next year. Um, the atmosphere is amazing, everyone is really friendly and it's been so cool to experience this event and all the different foiling craft here and it's been so cool to just meet with new people and connect with everybody over foiling and lots and lots of smiles and very fortunate to be here. It's also been really cool to see so many female sailors being involved here, not just in racing, but also designing some of the sumots and just getting involved all across the board. Um, and it's super important because we want more females to get involved in our sport and we want equal representation, which is where the sport is going. Epic week so far. We've had two pretty full on days of racing, perfect garter conditions. So yeah, really happy with um, how the racing's going. It's been super fun, the ETF fleet, and really cool to see so many people involved here this week. We are certainly interested in keeping uh, pushing for more female participation uh, in sailing and in foiling in particular. Mateusz Kuznirowicz, Pashemysl Garczyk, Flavio Marazzi, has retained 5.5 meter French Open title they won in 2021 after the final two races were sailed on Friday at the Regates Royals in Cannes. New Moot 3, BAH 25, Mark Holowesko, Christoph Berger, 
Peter Vlasov, finished second while Otto Nor 68, Bent Christian Wilhelmsen, Herf Cunningham, Lasse Berthelsen, finished third. Both are also former winners here, but the Polish team was unmatched this year, with great speed, maneuvers, and almost flawless tactics. Italian Danielle Benedetti Marcelio Brown, Goya windsurfing, came into silt requiring a top four finish in the single elimination to guarantee himself a second wave world title. The Brazilian, who last won the wave world title in 2013, has been in title contention several times since then, but a third world crown Brown also won the freestyle world title in 2007 had remained elusive until now.